In your phone was a GPS sat tracker. Pulses at 24 gigahertz. I don't know what that means. It's like a low jack, only two generations better than what the police have. And what does that mean? You speak English? Obviously not that well. You're kind of a jerk, aren't you? It means the NSA can read the time off your f***ing wristwatch. 2024 isn't all it's cracked up to be. If you were living back in the early 90s, did you expect the world would turn out the way it did? I mean, Back to the Future promised us flying cars, and we're still waiting for that. No, instead of flying cars and moon hotels, we got a global surveillance state that makes 1984 and A Brave New World look like child's play. But how did we get here? After all, one movie tried to warn everyone, and no one paid attention. Exactly what was the hidden warning behind the 1998 thriller classic Enemy of the State? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive off the cover and into Enemy of the State. Before we dive in, take a moment to like and subscribe. If just a fraction of the 95% of you who watch but haven't subscribed yet hit that button, it would make a huge difference in helping the channel grow. And the best part? Subscribing is completely free. Growing up in the 90s was one of the best experiences anyone could ever possibly have. Seriously, Gen Z and Gen Alpha simply don't know how magical the 90s truly were. It was a time of peace and prosperity. It was a time with some of the best movies, books, music, and video games in all of history. It was a time before all the nonsense going on today. It truly was a time without any worries. But then the new millennium hit, and absolutely everything changed. And it didn't change for the better. It changed to the scary, to the weird, to the downright dangerous. Some would argue that the turning point for not only the United States or Western civilization, but for humanity itself was the year 2000. Well, it was really the U.S. presidential election in November of 2000. This singular event broke humanity. It broke humanity by first breaking America. It created a schism of division and hate that we are still living in today. For those of you who are too young to remember, this was the election that was decided by the unelected elites rather than the will of the people. The hanging chads were really just a farce. Let me break it down for you. Vice President Al Gore won the state of Florida by a mere 537 votes, but somehow, seemingly through the grace of God or the devil, George W. Bush took the presidency. I guess when your brother is the governor of the state in question, you can just straight up steal electoral votes however you wish. But he did have help from his state attorney general cousin, so it was a team effort, but I digress. Needless to say that ever since this event, it's all been downhill for the country. But then came 9-11. As horrible as that was, there was some people who jumped for joy. The unelected elites celebrated and implemented a set of draconian surveillance tactics they had on the shelf for years, just waiting to implement them. The Patriot Act, enacted in response to the September 11th terrorist attacks, significantly expanded the surveillance and investigative powers of U.S. law enforcement agencies, with the stated goal of enhancing national security. Key provisions of the act allowed for broader wiretapping, easier access to personal records including financial, medical, and communication data, and the use of sneak and peek warrants, which let authorities search a person's property without immediate notification. While supporters argue that the Patriot Act has been essential in preventing further terrorist attacks, critics contend that it undermines civil liberties by granting the government too much power to monitor and control individuals without sufficient oversight or transparency. The act has sparked ongoing debates about the balance between security and privacy with many warning that it sets a dangerous precedent for government overreach. But exactly how does this all relate to Will Smith? Enemy of the State is a 1998 action thriller film directed by Tony Scott and produced by my man Jerry Bruckheimer. The movie stars Will Smith as Robert Clayton Dean, a successful labor lawyer who becomes unwittingly embroiled in a conspiracy involving the National Security Agency, or the NSA for short. The film kicks off with a US congressman being assassinated by NSA officials, 
who are trying to pass a controversial surveillance bill. Gee, are you starting to see the similarities between the movie and our world yet? I wonder how many people were unknowingly killed to bring us the wonders of the Patriot Act. Unbeknownst to Dean, a former college acquaintance named Daniel Zavitz, played by Jason Lee, captures the murder on tape and is subsequently killed by the NSA while trying to escape. Fuck a duck. Before his death, Zavitz secretly slips the tape into Dean's shopping bag, making Dean the target of a relentless manhunt. Dean's life is turned upside down as the NSA uses advanced surveillance technology to track his every move, freezing his bank accounts, bugging his house, and framing him for crimes he didn't commit. With no one else to turn to, Dean is forced to seek help from an enigmatic former intelligence operative named Edward Lyle, codenamed Brill, played by Gene Hackman. Together, they attempt to uncover the truth and expose the corrupt government officials behind the conspiracy. The film centers around the idea of mass surveillance by government agencies. It shows how the government can use advanced technology to track individuals' every move, highlighting concerns about privacy in the digital age. The movie portrays a world where government agencies, particularly the NSA, have immense technological capabilities to monitor citizens. As we found out in 2013, this is just the tip of the iceberg. The plot kicks off when a video recording of a political assassination ordered by a corrupt NSA official accidentally ends up in the hands of an unsuspecting lawyer, Robert Clayton Dean. As a result, Dean becomes the target of a sophisticated surveillance operation where his every move is tracked using cutting-edge technology. The film emphasizes the power imbalance between the government and ordinary citizens, something that became more prevalent following 9-11 and the global war on terror. It showcases how surveillance tools meant for national security can be misused by those in power to achieve personal or political goals. The audience is made to question the ethical boundaries of such surveillance practices and the potential for abuse when oversight is lacking. But now we're living in a world where these tools are not just used by corrupt individuals. As soon as Dean becomes a target, his life is turned upside down. The NSA agents infiltrate his personal space, tapping his phone, hacking into his bank accounts, tracking his location through various means, and even planting evidence to frame him. The film illustrates how quickly and completely an individual's privacy can be dismantled when advanced surveillance tools are turned against them, and that was 1998. Imagine what we have now in 2024. The film explores the consequences of living in a society where privacy is no longer guaranteed. It presents a world where personal freedoms can be easily compromised by those with access to surveillance technology. Dean's experience reflects a loss of control over his own life, emphasizing the vulnerability of individuals in the face of powerful institutions. This theme resonates with broader societal concerns about the trade-offs between privacy and security, especially in the context of growing digital surveillance in the real world. The film also delves into the abuses of power that would later become very apparent, especially during the Obama and Biden administrations. The primary antagonist, Thomas Reynolds, played by John Voight, is a high-ranking official within the NSA who orchestrates the murder of a congressman opposing a new surveillance bill. To cover up his crime, Reynolds uses his position and the vast resources of the NSA to manipulate, monitor, and control anyone who poses a threat to his agenda, including Robert Clayton Dean, an innocent lawyer who unknowingly becomes entangled in the conspiracy. The film illustrates how the unelected elites that Donald Trump always rails on about are people in positions of power who can exploit their authority to serve personal interests rather than the public good. Reynolds uses his power not to protect national security, but to eliminate opposition and safeguard his own career. 
Kind of sounds like what the unknown elites are doing to Donald Trump now, doesn't it? This abuse of power is shown to have devastating consequences as it drags innocent people into dangerous situations and undermines trust in government institutions. The movie raises concerns about what can happen when there are insufficient checks and balances to prevent such misuse of authority. And following the events of 2024, it's really no wonder conspiracy theories are exploding surrounding the assassination attempt on Donald Trump and the subsequent rise of Kamala Harris seemingly out of nowhere. Remember when Kamala flamed out of the 2020 and 2024 primary campaigns without a single vote by the people? I sure do. Throughout Enemy of the State, the audience sees how the rights and freedoms of individuals can be quickly stripped away under the guise of national security. Robert Dean, an average citizen, becomes the victim of an extensive surveillance campaign. His communications are intercepted, his movements are tracked, his financial records are manipulated, and his personal relationships are destroyed, all without his consent or knowledge. And now we have an exponentially expanded version of this. The phone in your pocket is listening to everything you do and you don't even know it is. The film portrays a scenario where government agencies have the ability to bypass legal protections and operate outside the bounds of the law. But now it seems that this is so commonplace and people don't even care. We really are living in a brave new world. This theme reflects concerns about the erosion of civil liberties in the face of expanding government surveillance. The film critiques the idea that sacrificing individual freedoms is a necessary trade-off for security, a debate that raged following the 9-11 attacks, suggesting that such sacrifices can lead to a slippery slope where basic rights are endangered. By showing how quickly and easily Dean's civil liberties are violated, Enemy of the State questions the legitimacy of surveillance practices that operate without transparency or accountability. The film serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of allowing government agencies to operate unchecked, and it underscores the importance of maintaining a balance between security measures and the protection of individual rights. But wasn't there another enterprising young lad that showed the world how deep and pervasive the problem truly is? Edward Snowden is a former contractor for the NSA who in 2013 leaked classified information revealing the extent of global surveillance programs conducted by the NSA and its allies. His disclosures sparked worldwide debate over privacy, government surveillance, and the balance between national security and civil liberties, just like in this movie. He worked in various technical roles at the CIA and as a contractor for the NSA. His positions gave him access to highly classified information about the US government's surveillance capabilities and programs. In 2013, Snowden provided journalists Glenn Greenwald, Laura Poitras, and Ewan McCaskill with a vast trove of classified NSA documents. These documents detailed the NSA's global surveillance programs, many of which were conducted in cooperation with international partners such as the UK's GCHQ, namely the PRISM program, which was a surveillance program that allowed the NSA to collect data, including emails, chat logs, and other digital communications directly from the servers of major US tech companies like Google, Facebook, and Apple. The NSA was found to be collecting the phone records of millions of Americans, regardless of whether they were suspected of any wrongdoing. This included metadata such as the time and duration of calls. X-Key Score was a tool that allowed the NSA to search and analyze global internet data, giving analysts the ability to monitor virtually anyone's online activity in real time. And it turns out that the NSA had been intercepting the communications of foreign leaders, including allies like German Chancellor Angela Merkel, raising diplomatic tensions. Snowden has stated that his decision to leak the classified documents was driven by a belief that the public had the right to know the extent of government surveillance and that these activities were overreaching and unconstitutional. 
He was particularly concerned about the impact of mass surveillance on privacy and freedom. This is exactly one of the key themes of Enemy of the State. In Enemy of the State, the NSA wields an arsenal of advanced surveillance technologies that allow them to monitor, manipulate, and control individuals. These include satellite tracking, wiretapping, facial recognition, hacking, and even the ability to intercept and alter communications in real time. Robert Clayton Dean, the protagonist, becomes the target of these technologies after he unwittingly comes into possession of a video implicating a government official in a murder. The film vividly portrays how technology can be used to track Dean's every move, plant false evidence, and destroy his life, all without his knowledge or consent. The film underscores the immense power that comes with technological control. It raises concerns about how these tools can be used not just for national security, but also for more nefarious purposes, such as political gain, personal vendettas, or silencing dissent. And as we've seen in 2024 in the UK and the European Union, they are being implemented to great effect. By showing how easily these technologies can be turned against an innocent individual, the movie suggests that in a society where such surveillance is possible, no one is truly safe from being targeted or manipulated as we've seen in the UK where people were arrested for voicing their opinions on Facebook. Don't tell the truth to the plebs, I guess. This theme is particularly prescient given the ongoing real-world concerns about the potential for abuse in the use of surveillance technology by governments and corporations. But there are even more nuanced themes to explore here. The themes of surveillance and privacy explored in Enemy of the State can be directly connected to the real-world actions and impact of Edward Snowden, Chelsea Manning, and Julian Assange. All three figures are known for their roles in exposing government secrets, particularly related to surveillance, privacy violations, and state power. Now, let's tie these themes together in the context of their actions. Snowden's 2013 leaks revealed the vast scope of government surveillance conducted by the NSA, exposing programs like PRISM that collected data from millions of people, including private citizens, without their knowledge. His disclosures highlighted the extent to which government agencies can monitor and control individuals' communications, much like the NSA's capabilities in Enemy of the State. Snowden's revelations were forced a global conversation about the balance between national security and individual privacy, one of the key themes of the film. Snowden's leaks demonstrated how the loss of privacy was not just a hypothetical scenario, but a reality for millions of people. The programs he exposed were not just targeting criminals or terrorists, but were sweeping up the data of ordinary citizens, reflecting a significant overreach by the government, not just one corrupt official like in the film. Snowden argued that this loss of privacy eroded fundamental freedoms as it created an environment where individuals could no longer assume their communications were private. Another hero who sacrificed everything in the pursuit of truth was Chelsea Manning, a former U.S. Army intelligence analyst who leaked classified military and diplomatic documents to WikiLeaks in 2010. These leaks included video footage of airstrikes and diplomatic cables that revealed the extent of U.S. military operations and the surveillance of global diplomatic communications. Manning's actions exposed the inner workings of government surveillance and military operations, raising questions about the ethical boundaries of such practices. The documents leaked by Manning also underscored the vulnerability of privacy in the context of military and diplomatic operations. The exposure of classified information showed how governments operate under a veil of secrecy, often infringing on the privacy and rights of individuals, both domestically and internationally. Manning's leaks revealed the extent to which surveillance was embedded in U.S. military and diplomatic efforts. Perhaps the biggest and most prominent figure in this debate was Julian Assange. As the founder of WikiLeaks, Assange played a crucial role 
in publishing the documents leaked by Manning and later by others, including material related to NSA surveillance like the Vault 7 leaks detailing the CIA's hacking tools. WikiLeaks has been central in bringing to light the scale of government surveillance and the secrecy surrounding it. Assange's work challenged the opacity of governmental operations, pushing the issue of mass surveillance into the public eye. By publishing classified documents, Assange and WikiLeaks further highlighted the tension between the public's right to know and the government's desire to keep information secret. The publication of these documents sparked debates about privacy, transparency, and the public's right to be informed about the actions of their own governments. WikiLeaks' work has been pivotal in exposing how the loss of privacy impacts not just individuals, but entire nations. The actions of Snowden, Manning, and Assange can be seen as real-world reflections of the themes depicted in Enemy of the State. All three figures expose the extensive and often unchecked surveillance capabilities of governments, revealing how these powers can lead to significant privacy violations and abuses of power. Their disclosures underscored the idea that government surveillance is not just a tool for security, but also a mechanism that can be used to control and manipulate individuals and societies, much like in the film. The theme of loss of privacy is central to their actions. Snowden, Manning, and Assange each revealed how individuals, whether they are foreign leaders, journalists, or ordinary citizens, can be swept up in the vast surveillance apparatus. This loss of privacy, as depicted in the film and revealed by these whistleblowers, has profound implications for civil liberties, as it creates an environment where people can no longer feel secure in their communications or their actions. In both the fictional world of Enemy of the State and the real world actions of these whistleblowers, the core message is clear. Unchecked surveillance poses a significant threat to privacy and freedom. The loss of privacy is not just a personal issue, but a societal one, as it erodes trust in institutions and can lead to the abuse of power on a massive scale. The film serves as a cautionary tale, while the actions of Snowden, Manning, and Assange bring that caution into the real world forcing society to confront the very issues the movie dramatizes. But what do you guys think about all this? Do you think Enemy of the State goes far enough in exposing what the government would eventually do? And how accurate do you think it all is? Please do let me know down below in the comments, and as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one! Okie dokie!